They run for 1,500 meters, an exhausting endurance race that is the last of 10 track and field events over two days of competition. It is called the decathlon. Some say it is the most challenging of all athletic events, and they called the Olympic champion the world's greatest athlete. Even those who do not win can claim a remarkable level of physical conditioning and mental discipline as every muscle is pulled and pushed to its outer limits. On a summer day in Munich, Germany in 1972, a young Soviet named Nikolai Avilov wins the Olympic gold medal in the decathlon. Second place silver goes to his countryman Litvinenko. Tatus from Poland wins third. But there are no medals for 10th place. That's where the tables put the young American, number 992. However, for him, it is not a defeat. It is merely part of an odyssey that will end four years from now in Montreal. On that day, the world will know his name. His name is Bruce Jenner. He trains on a beach in Northern California for one of the most important days of his life. But it hasn't always been this way. Like all champions, Bruce Jenner had to start somewhere. little he was a very active young man he was constantly on the move when it came to sports in school he would start off in football right off the beginning of the season and then after football he'd be into basketball and when basketball was over <laughs> he was into track and when track was over he was into water skiing so it didn't matter what he was in whether it was in sports or whether it was in school or whatever he was very very competitive as a teenager Bruce Jenner was a national champion water skier. He was offered a job in a water show in Florida. Instead, he decided to continue his amateur career at Graceland College in Lamoni, Iowa. Though Jenner had accepted a football scholarship, track coach L.D. Weldon saw in the young recruit a potential decathlon man. Well, I was really impressed uh, with Bruce because uh, he'd listened to you. He was faithful in what he was, what you were trying to uh, discipline him to do, and, and he had a desire to do the, just do the very best he could possibly do. It wasn't actually until 1970, I'd been in track and field for about six years, and like football and basketball and skiing and everything, and at that point I decided I wanted to try my first decathlon just to see what happened. Okay. When I did it, I said, this is the greatest thrill I've ever had. I've oh. never, ever had an opportunity to go into an event like that and be so challenged by it. Everything in sports was there that I wanted. It was tough. It was, it was very difficult to train for. It was long. It was involved. And so in that way, uh, after I ran my first week decathlon, I said, this is it. This is what I want to do in sports. The decathlon is scored on an international table that awards points in each event. 
The better the performance, the more points an athlete earns. Jenner piled up enough points to win a spot on the U.S. Olympic team at Munich in 1972. His 10th place finish there was enough to make him hungry for more. This is the greatest experience I've ever been through. I'm very young. At that time, I was 22 years old. I had only run a decathlon for a couple of years. I thought I had a, a lot of areas where I could improve myself. I felt like I wanted to come back to 1976 Olympic Games. And I thought in Montreal, I was not going to be there just to try to go to the Games. I was going to go to try to win. And uh, I had four years to try to pull that thing off. When Jenner returned from Munich, he and his young bride, Christy, decided to move to San Jose, California. They found an apartment next to the running track at San Jose City College. It fit Jenner's plans perfectly. Getting up every morning, there was that track staring at him. He couldn't get away from it. He couldn't pretend that it wasn't there. So the dedication began. I learned pretty quick that you didn't ever talk about losing. You didn't ever talk about uh, possibility of defeat. You always talked about winning, and you believed that it would happen. Faith, keeping a faith. In San Jose, Jenner becomes part of a community of world-class athletes training for Montreal. He works out every day, beginning before breakfast. His dog, Bertha, is a constant companion. Most track athletes concentrate on a single event. Jenner can afford no such luxury. He must work on 10, honing his technique, building his strength, improving his speed and endurance. This is no part-time job. He spends six or seven hours a day on the track. In the rest of his waking hours, his thoughts are never far from Montreal. He runs hundreds of miles, and each one brings him just a little closer to a gold medal. 16-1, Bruce. Not too bad. Snap it up next time. He also finds friends who are training for some of the same dreams, including Vince Stryker, another young decathlete. Together, Jenner and Stryker put in the time, run the miles, and lift the weights. The hardest part about this is, is trying to get the weight up on top of you, okay? Put them on your knees, and then lean back and keep one leg and the other leg right, and sort of one right behind each other and get it up, okay? Just do a couple here. The work pays dividends. Jenner jumps farther, runs faster, and throws longer. He begins to pile up an impressive string of victories and breaks the world record in one of them. Within two years, the anonymous American who had finished 10th at Munich is the world's top-ranked decathlete. And still, that is not enough. Montreal looms larger every day, and Jenner becomes a man obsessed. He sets a new world record in the U.S. Olympic trials as he qualifies for the American team. Finally, all the running and all the work take him to Montreal. Getting close, Arnie, getting close. July 17, 1976, the 21st Olympiad opens, and Bruce Jenner is there. I'll say one thing, it is big enough. But after 12 years of training, Bruce Jenner must wait nearly two weeks more before his time to compete. Time for the pressure to build. Time to think about the Russian, Navilov, who has returned to defend his title. No doubt he too has trained long and hard for Montreal. But the eyes of the world will be focused on the challenger, Bruce Jenner. This will be Jenner's last decathlon. He has decided that win or lose, he will not compete again.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you to the sixth day of the athletic competitions of the games of the 21st Olympia. It is a confident and well-rested Bruce Jenner who comes to the starting line in the first event, the 100-meter race. But if the excitement does not show on Jenner's face, it is evident on those of his family and his friends sitting in the yellow t-shirt section. To them, he's already a champion. The 100 meters is such a cold and heartless event because it is so short. It's only one race. It's over in a little over 10 seconds. Because of being uh, that one chance, it's a scary event. If you make a mistake at any time within that 10 second period, it's going to cost you valuable points. It's 26 points for every one tenth of a second. Jenner sets a personal record in the 100 meters. He's off to a good start as he goes into the long jump. The decathlon is a very personal event. Each event, you have what we call a PR. It's the personal record. If you know what these are, you try to push yourself to that maximum every time, you're going to come up with a very high decathlon. If there's, let's say, 25 competitors in the meet, there's 25 little track meets going on. Everybody is trying to do their personal best time and their best performance. In the long jump, each competitor gets three tries. The points from the longest one are added to his total score. His second jump is better than the first, but not as long as he would like. He has one more chance. I just felt at that point that was a good jump. I didn't know exactly how far until finally a couple of minutes later they flashed my distance up on the uh, score clock. It was one centimeter farther than I'd ever jumped before in my life and uh, that was two personal bests in a row. And needless to say, that was a way to start the Olympic Games off. Waiting in between events can be very boring. You know, there's nothing to do. A lot of times you want to get the thing going because for so many years I had imagined the Olympic Games and the times and the distances I'm going to get and the total score that I wanted to see finally what it is. I wanted to see what that final score was. I had been waiting to see it for such a long time. Jenner will try for his best in the shot put. The shot put for me was probably one of the most uh, exciting events of them all because one week before the Drake Relays, back in April, I had injured my finger when the shot came off the back of my hand and I pulled the tendon in my hand. It caused an awful lot of pain and also it caused me to not be able to practice that event for months and months before the games. So I didn't expect a big throw. I expected to throw around 47 feet. Right before I threw that last throw, I thought to myself, I'll put that little finger behind it because I got, uh, you know, 50, 60 years to let this finger recuperate after this meet is over with. And I just let it go, and luckily it didn't hurt that much. So uh, I threw uh, farther than I'd ever thrown before, and that was my third personal best in the world. Needless to say, I was very excited. In the high jump, each competitor jumps at increasingly difficult heights until he misses three times at any one setting. The high jump is always a fun event. If you're rested up enough before the event takes off, you're going to jump very high. Coming up to the Olympic Games, I kept saying to myself, my best at that time was 6'7". I wanted to go 6'8", because I thought that would be a really solid jump for him, and I thought I had the potential to go that high. I'm looking at the bar, 6 feet 8 inches. I should be able to clear that bar. There's no reason why I shouldn't. I'm in the best shape. I'm stronger than I've ever been, and I can be able to jump higher than I've ever jumped before. 
It came down to my third attempt. I took the approach, and I remember having a good, solid run at it, and I had good speed, and I took off. It is his fourth personal record in four events. At the end of the first day of competition is the 400 meters, an endurance sprint. Jenner is only in third place overall, but he can make up ground with a good performance. When you're out there on the track, it's a very lonely thing. Even if there's thousands of people in the stands, television cameras everywhere, 20, 30 other competitors down on the track, you're very lonely because you personally have to come up with the best performance you can get. Nobody else is going to be out there helping you. There's not going to be another guy going to run the second half of the 400 meters for you. You have to do it all yourself. But on the other hand, you won't be out there unless there's other people off the track who have helped you out tremendously. You don't want to let them down. It's a lot more fun to end a meet, a winner, than it is to end a meet in second place. Jenner wins his heat in the 400 meters with a time of 47.5 seconds, another personal record. The first day of competition is finished. Jenner is still in third place, but well within striking distance. Avilov knows that Jenner's strongest day is yet to come. It rains all night. A wet track could mean trouble for the competitors. I finally got up the next morning. It had stopped raining, but it was still very overcast. It looked like it could rain at any moment. I grabbed all my stuff, went down to the track, and started warming up for the hurdles. and felt very good, but at that point, I felt a little cautious. I felt like I've got to get through this first event uh, and just get a, a decent time. I don't care what my time is. I just have to get some points for it. The hurdles have never been one of Jenner's best events. Now the slippery track introduces an element of uncertainty. Jenner knows that medals have been lost by men who fell in the hurdles. He has seen competitors in earlier heats trip and lose valuable time. Now he is concerned less with a personal record than with simply not making a mistake. Jenner gets out very well. Bruce is getting over the hurdles. He's not banging his legs on the hurdles. He hasn't knocked one down yet. Skoronek of Poland wins it. Jamisa of France is third, and Jenner gets a solid second. Looking for Jenner's time now, it's 14.84. That's 866 points for Jenner. He has done what he wanted to do. He holds on to third place. The four events which remain are Jenner's strongest, beginning with the discus. The discus is an event that's a very easy event not to do well in because it's a very technical event. It's a spinning motion, and at any one point in that spin, if you don't have your feet put properly in the right position, right underneath you, and a good base, the discus is not going to go far. Jenner's first throw travels over 50 meters. The second falls short of that. He prepares for his third. Point one six. Jenner is disappointed. His third throw is the strongest of all, but a low trajectory brings the disc to earth short of the 50 meters. But he still wins the event and moves into second place. He could take the lead in the pole vault coming up, one of his best events. Among the leading competitors, no one vaults as well as he does. It's a fun event. There's no way you can get around it. It's fun to come running down there and plant the pole and go hopefully 16 feet in the air and come down in a nice big soft pit if everything works out well. As 
in the high jump, each competitor gets three tries at each height. The higher Jenner can vault, the more distance he will pick up on the rest of the field. At first, his drive for the lead falters. But Jenner is at home in this event. It was the first track and field specialty he ever tried as a schoolboy, and he has come to rely on it over the years. It rarely has failed him. The international scoring tables favor good pole vaulters, and Jenner sees his opportunity here. He has cleared 4.7 meters. The bar is moved to 4.8. He misses the first, but tries again. Jenner's best is 4.8 meters, nearly 16 feet. After eight events, he is finally in first place. The gold medal is within his grasp as the competitors move to the javelin. In this event, Jenner is far more accomplished than his nearest competitors. His third throw of 68.5 meters not only increases his first place lead, but also puts him close to a new world record. Millions of people around the world are watching his triumph in living color and instant replay. Good location, a good strong throw. Only the 1,500 meters remains. At that point, I started thinking to myself that uh, this is almost over with. I had trained for 12 years of my life, and I've got one event left. Uh, I started getting very choked up at that time. I started thinking about uh, what a, a great time in my life this is, and how much time and energy I had put into it. And uh, it was going to be over with just in the next uh, 15 or 20 minutes. The 1,500 meters for a lot of decathlon men has always been grudgery. They've always hated to try to do something like that. I always enjoyed it. It was the most challenging event in all of the decathlon. The gold medal is almost a foregone conclusion. Barring total collapse, Jenner will win the decathlon. He seems assured of a new world record given his abilities in distance events. But the Russian, Litvinenko, the second place finisher four years ago at Munich, bursts into the lead. What could be an anticlimactic race turns into a classic moment in Olympic history. Jenner begins to chase after the lead. Though Litvinenko is out of the running for a medal, he picks up his pace as Jenner closes, and the final few yards become an exhibition of pride and pure competitive spirit. Jenner's two-day performance here in Montreal is worth remembering, not just for its sheer athletic brilliance, but for much more. For the truth is that Bruce Jenner was not the fastest nor the strongest competitor. His triumph is not so much a triumph of body as of the mind, the spirit, the will. For the decathlon is like a brick wall. But for two days in July 1976, Bruce Jenner got to peek over that wall.
The unknown in Munich had become a national hero and an international figure. He had achieved his ultimate goal, and now his words were important to other young athletes who wanted to do the same. When competing, often you um, feel good during your event, but have you ever felt like dropping out of a race when you're competing sometimes? Because, you know, we all have ups and down days. Have you yeah. ever felt like that? Well, I never really felt like... Well, a couple of times, I have to say, yes, I did feel like dropping out of a race. And, uh, uh, in fact, I did drop out of a race once. It was in a quarter mile. I just, it was in like an all-comers meet, and I, I just couldn't get into it. And right in the middle of the race, I said, why am I doing this? And I just pulled off because I was very tired from workouts, and I just wasn't physically or mentally into it. You're always going to have down times. There's no way you can get around it. You've got good days and you've got bad days. But it seems like in the back of my mind, I always had a, uh, uh, a dream, and I always wanted to be able to fulfill that. One thing that you always do is you'll always doubt yourself. Even if I had run a great decathlon, I would train all year long the next year, and I knew I was in better shape. But you always doubt yourself. Can I bring that performance out of me on that day? And it's a very scary thing, and it just, with experience, going through that experience a few times and learning about yourself and how you react under the pressure situation, um, it's going to help out quite a bit. But you just have to keep your chin up and uh, keep plugging away. Look at it as a very long-range goal, not as a day-to-day -day goal. I thought it'd be very sad to see it all go because it was so much fun and it was my whole life at that time. I just didn't want to compete just for the fun of it and just do mediocre. If I'm going to be in it, I want to go all the way with it. I think that's what it's all about. I learned that the only way you're going to get anywhere in life is to work hard at something. There's no way you can get around it. I don't care if you're a musician, whether you're a writer, whether you're an athlete, whether you're a businessman, whether you've got your own business. There's no way to get around it. You've got to put the time in. And you've got to work very hard. You've got to learn a lot of things. You have to experience things. The one thing I always want to have in my life is to always uh, be challenged by something. To always have something out there that I'm looking forward to doing. If I have a, a goal or a challenge out there that I'm looking forward to, I feel like I'm always moving ahead in my life. This film has been a presentation of the Wheaties Sports Federation.